What's up guys, do you want to get as close to 100% males for your breeding season as possible? Let's stick around for this video. This is Koi Boy and he'll just be hanging out for a little bit. So my breeding journey really starts a few years ago when I started experimenting with the different temperature zones that breeders would claim would work to get males or females. After thoroughly testing these two temperature zones out, I can undoubtedly say that females are possible 100% of the time if you incubate between 78 degrees and 81 degrees max. I like to say as close to 80 degrees as possible, you'll get 100% females, or you should according to my thousands of geckos produced over the last few years. Now my experience with males is a little bit different. Here's Toothless, he is our oldest breeding Black Knight male. We got him about 2019 and he was already like two seasons in by then, but man does he produce some fire stuff and you'll start to see that later in this video as well as in our collection and on our website. But he is a boy and if you do want to produce boys, whether it's Black Knights, Tangerines or anything like that, listen to this advice closely. So my first year incubating for males, there was probably a hundred, maybe 200 or so males that we had incubated. And we did this at 90 degrees. And the results that we got were a little bit disappointing. Out of those hundred or so leopard geckos that were incubated for male, only about 50 to 60% of them turned out to actually be males. So what I did was I changed things up. Now for the Black Knight specifically, that turned out to be female males that were incubated at 90 degrees, we still got a significant amount that were really dark or pitch black. So when people talk about temperature affecting black nights, I don't really think there's enough data or evidence to suggest one way or the other yet. I'm just telling you my experience and what I got, I still got pitch black geckos at 90 degree incubation, the same as 80 degree incubation. So I think as far as black nights are concerned, in my eyes, that myth is a little debunked for now, or at least put on the back burner. And so for the research can be done and compared. Leopard geckos are so cute. Just look at their little licks. They always lick you. I always tell people this. Every 20 seconds or so, they're about due for a lick. So see, they lick everything that they crawl on. So I call it like their sixth sense almost. This is a super giant radar male. And man, if we could get him to open his eyes, that would be fantastic because they are just shining ruby red. It's pretty amazing. Bell albinos do tend to be a little bit more sensitive to light. At least so do most sources to say of people who work with them and the super giants tend to have these really like wide head frames as you can see with this gecko here pretty amazing stuff they still do the licking thing though if you give him the chance and i just pulled him out of his dark humid hide right now so he's probably adjusting a little bit we'll shield his eyes a little from the overhead lights so the following season i actually don't remember why i wanted to change the temperature but i did oh i remember why it's because I had in my big incubator, and here's my big incubator. Last season, I was actually incubating leopard gecko eggs and ball python eggs at the same time. So you can see here, turn on the flash real quick. Here's uh, a few pure black knight eggs incubating, a couple that went bad over there. That is usual for all morphs of leopard geckos, but especially black knights. I'll do a whole nother video on that, but you do need to outcross the black knights so that you can have higher levels of fertility. I love these trays, they even slide out. And you can see, I actually got some puzzle ball python eggs incubating here next to all of these leopard gecko eggs. And you can see the temperature in here is about 87, and it does vary a little bit from 87 to 88 to maybe 89 towards the back in certain areas, but in general, it is 87 to 88 degrees. You can see one indicator of eclipse, is that they do have the white tip to their nose. Most of them will have a white tip to their tail and then white tips to their legs. This is that boy's dad. And you can see those red eyes that I was talking about right there. Oh my gosh, the way the camera picks them up even, so mystical looking. I really do have a new infatuation for Bell albinos. I would say the morph is not as far along color wise, especially for the tangerines as like Tremper is. And it does do things different. Like Bell is a little bit lighter and brighter and Tremper is a little bit like more richer and saturated. So I'll never give up one for the other. But after working with only Tremper for the first six years of my operation, I certainly do look forward to working with some Bell. And there have been clips where you can see his eyes kind of shining through. And so amazing. There's a little bit of that white nose tip there again too. Some of them will have more than others. 
and then especially the ones that have completely pigment removed those are called pied and sometimes you could even get pigment removed on the body itself but that normally happens within super snow mixed with the clips so getting back to my second experiment with leopard gecko eggs it wasn't meant to necessarily be an experiment for the leopard geckos it was just out of convenience for the fact that i had huge ball python eggs and a decent amount of clutches to incubate and i couldn't put them in our small incubators i had to put them in the big incubator and the big incubator was being used for the leopard geckos at that time because i was incubating for mostly males because the season prior we made like a thousand females or something like that and so this next season i wanted to incubate for males and the small incubator was being used for females so i couldn't flip the two now it is during this time that i accidentally discovered a better temperature zone to produce a increasingly high percent of males. So at 87 to 88 degrees, just what I was incubating the ball python eggs at, we produced about 95% male out of the next thousand babies. It was absolutely ridiculous. That could have been really, really lucky because we're heading into our next breeding season now. So I'll be able to give you analysis on our next breeding season based on how many males hatch out at that same temperature zone because now I'm locking in that temperature zone and I'm like, hey, 95%, I'll take it. So I'll definitely report for you as time goes on the results. But since making this announcement and realizing this, you know, I've, I've spoken this on our live streams. I've talked about it with people that have asked me questions. And I do seem to be getting some public support from other people who have experienced this same thing. At about 87 to 88 degrees, they are experiencing exponentially higher percentages of males than at 90 degrees. Now, a while back, there was this breeder in the leopard gecko hobby who was telling people that he was experiencing 100% males at 91 degrees. Now that's a little risky for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've never really seen documented evidence of this, but I am going to assume and give the benefit of the doubt that this is true. In leopard geckos, you can create something called hot females, which are females that are incubated at 90 to 92 degrees will become aggressive and infertile or refuse to breed. I, I forget what the exact traditional viewpoint is on that, but it's something around those lines. Now the black knight females that I produced at 90 degrees, they all bred, they're still breeding again this year. So that's what I mean is we really need to document this stuff and lay it out on a spreadsheet and look at it across thousands upon thousands upon thousands of observation points. Otherwise you can't really say that something is true versus not true. So that's what I would like to see as far as the hot female study goes. But let's just assume hypothetically that is true because scientists seem to think that it's possible after talking to a few people who are in the realm of science and studying other species as well as reptiles, they do seem to think that that is a possibility in the same way that color fluctuation and the sex of the animal can be a possibility through temperature fluctuation. I just think more research needs to be done on all of that as a whole. But I began thinking to myself, why would female temperature incubation be 100% accurate, but male temperature incubation be only 50% to 60% accurate. That just didn't make sense to me. Mathematically, that just doesn't make sense. So thankfully I stumbled across this, for lack of a better term, 87 to 88 degrees, and across a thousand geckos or so produced 90 to 95% males. Now we're getting somewhere. So anyway, this video is just my observational testimony of what I have experienced working for me as well as the audible testimony of a few others that I've talked to that have experienced something similar. Obviously that breeder that I was talking to you about that incubated at 91 degrees would probably disagree and has a different experience. However, look at Bolt, this guy's name is Bolt. He is from the Norman Davis legacy line and he has a 50% red eye, shaded red eye, I think, and a 100% one. Yeah, he's got like a 75% and a 100% one. But his two sons that we have here, one of which I was showing you, both of them have 100% full shaded in eyes. It's amazing. So anyway, different people might experience different things. I think the more that we partner together with science and scientific labs to understand this stuff would be great, which is why I really like what Geckos Etc. is doing with his partnership with Dr. Longgaon Guo and studying the genetic code of leopard geckos so that maybe RGI one day will have 
a leopard gecko shed test where we can test for hidden hets in our leopard geckos. How cool would that be? So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. The summary of this video is this. If you want females, incubate at 79 to 80 degrees and you should get 100% females. Make sure your incubator is stable, has fans, and move different thermometers around so that you can make sure that the air temperature is relatively stable within one degree of everywhere else in the incubator as much as possible. And if you want males, give it a shot. Incubate at that 88 degree point. It should be able to fluctuate a little bit from there, maybe half a degree or a degree higher or lower, and it should be fine because that's what happens in our incubator. It fluctuates a degree higher or a degree lower, depending on how forward the eggs are, backward the eggs are, or elevated or lowered the eggs are in the incubator. Sometimes it's hard to control with 100% accuracy that the entire incubator stays the same 88 degree temperature that you want. So a little bit of fluctuation is normal and average for that. So me and Bolt will say goodbye for now. We'll see you in the next video. And if you got topics that you want us to cover, let me know in a comment below. I already jotted down a bunch of stuff from the past that people have left for us. And now we're starting to get back into creating content again. You know, there was a while where I took off from creating long form content because the business was just really busy while we were growing and all that kind of stuff. The last couple months, we kind of hit a lull towards the end of our season. We downsized a lot. And obviously we don't have a huge ramp up of babies right now because we're just kind of starting our pairings and pulling eggs and all that kind of stuff. So I have a little bit of time now to start really hammering in on social media once again. So Lord willing, you should be able to start seeing a whole bunch of fresh leopard gecko and reptile content coming your way. So I thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, me and Bolt say, have a geeky gecko, great day. Peace.